yeah. Brothers. There's the Jungle Brothers. I don't actually ever have to say that the Jungle Brothers, because every song they bring out, they actually do name check themselves. Unlike Mark Eitzel, why don't you do that in your song? Oh, you know, I, I have to really bury my my overweening um, um, uh, ego. Uh, otherwise, it, would, it wouldn't be. Big. It'd be too. It's too big for this city. Because, like, the thing is, um, like during songs, you do stop. Like, there was that. I want to say on your Monday. That beautiful moment when you said, I will never love again, you're singing it. And you went, that's the only true, true thing I'm going to say tonight. <laughs> so, like, you know, you do, in the middle of songs, go... Because it's, it's that bit weird, so... Because usually you'd think there'd be intense concentration, you're singing the song. I am, that is intense concentration. That's me concentrating intensely. And, but, so, like, you know? just pop out and you go, I'm just going to say this now. Well, you're right. Cause, but it was... But it, it made people laugh, and that's, that's the bottom line for me. It made people laugh and made them sad. <laughs> Good. <laughs> because the thing is, there's two gigs I went to. Like, I just kind of stopped going to that many gigs from now on because, and it was like, I've seen you so many times when I went, well, I'll go along. But, like, I forgot the thing I love about going to see like you and what, like, the other week I saw Bright Eyes, mm. the amount of love in that room. You know, and that's what gigs should be about. Not like, you know, oh, here's a couple of tunes. Right. But can you feel that love coming back? <sighs> it's hard. It's really, it's really intimidating, yeah. Cause, because obviously, you know, a lot of the songs deal with self-hatred and stuff, and then you're having <laughs> this intense love thrown at you. Yeah. And is it where you don't feel worthy? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, especially because they know, they know more, more, more of my songs than I know. You know, and I can't, and I just, and I'm really, I'm a big ham. I just want to do exactly what they want to hear. But I can't, I can't, I am. No, I am, except for the newer, the newer stuff, you know. What, what do you mean with the newer stuff? I insist on doing it. Yeah, no, but that's yeah. what everyone wants, really. Yeah, I know they'll shout out for the old hits, but it's yeah. only because the new songs aren't the old hits yet. Right, right, right. You digging where I'm coming from? <laughs> no, that's what I mean. I loved, I always, uh, because also, like, because I remember even with the first solo album, you know, I listened to it and thought, yeah, really like the album. And then I went to see it at the Bloomsbury that time, and the album made such more sense live. Mm. Like, you're just one of those performers that, yeah, I'm not saying you've got a bad production on the albums, <laughs> but it is that thing of, you know, you do make so much sense live. I hear this all the time, yeah. That's but, good, that's yeah. good, though. That's my job. I mean, you know, it's, it's my job to be to, to do that live, you know? And you still love doing the live thing? Oh, I, I, I hate it. I love it and I hate it, you know? I, I just, I, I'd rather perform in front of people around a table than, than get up on the stage and have to do all the, have to deal with, with, with indifferent sound people and, and, yeah, I know. you know, and indifferent club owners and, and I'd, I'd rather not deal with that. But, um, cause I was talking to Pat who you stay with when, uh, when you're over and, uh, she was saying like, cause like when you travel around, you don't go with anyone else. Like you just pretty much go, your entourage is you. Yeah. But that, do you like that or is that quite hard? I hate it. That's what I hate the most. Right. I mean, well, I, did, I just did a tour in America with Low, you know, I and I just, and it, uh, yeah, they're great, and it, they're amazing. It's, and um, it was great. I had a drummer. I have a drummer that I tour with now, and it's great to have somebody on stage with me who says, Mark, you know, you cannot read anyone's mind. You don't know what they're thinking. And also, he just goes, do the next song. And also, yeah. he goes, one, two, three, four, and starts the right, song. Right, he does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but so, um, so um, what kind of crowds were you doing with Low then? They're crowds, mostly. No, but was it like big crowds? Uh, yeah, 500, 600 people a night. Because yeah, I just sometimes worry about because like all the great you know, underground American stuff, I'm just hoping they're getting a decent audience in America as well. I don't know. I don't know about America anymore. I, I've given up. Did you enjoy the tour in America? Oh, I loved the tour in America, yeah. Right. Yeah, it was great. And did you hang out with the Mormons? They're very sweet. I think I was a little, I was a little much for them, but... You kept on going up drinking coffee. In front I kept I kept screaming and shouting in the dressing room and drinking wine and just like ah! And they're, they're they're very quiet and they read their books and. Well, two of them are. One of them isn't a Mormon, though, are they? I have no idea. So you didn't hang with them then? Not much. They 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 have their own little world. So now um, you've brought out uh, what well, you're going to bring out in February. Um, a strange album, really. Uh, the Ugly American, which is <laughs> where well, you went over to Greece and played with tried Greek musicians and did some old stuff and some new stuff. Right. So how did that come about? It was a uh, this man in, in town, Theodore, and he it was his crazy idea. He's trying to I guess I guess it was to, it's, it's a, he's trying to get cultures together, you know, mm. like the American musician with the Greek, and, and see what happens, you know. And, I, and it, it was great. I mean, you know, you you walk in a situation like that thinking, oh no, you know. But actually, the musicians were amazing, and the people were professional, and everything was. But you you played nice. in Greece before, yeah. Once many years ago, yeah. 
And so, but were you aware of like traditional Greek music though? Not at all. So that was a real punt on your part then, right? Uh, yeah. And and happy with the results. Yeah, I mean, I did it. I did it to get a free trip to to, to Greece, you know, basically. <laughs> and then and then actually the results are great, you and, know. And what about um, yourself then? Like, where where is it standing at the moment with record deals and stuff for you? Like, have you got a new record coming out as well? I'm trying to do a record with Matador. Um, I hope they release it. I love them. Have you yeah. actually got it all done? I've got no. I've just got. I'm just. I'm just doing demos. Right. I keep rewriting the songs. And but you know, like, have you kind of got the songs that you want? You're just rewriting them now. I've got about ten songs that I that I'm working on, and then new songs, and so. Well, do you want to play the uh, the first one which you opened on Monday? Sure. What, yeah. What's it called? Uh, it's called Patriot's Heart. This is beautiful. It's 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 for the new America. God bless them. <laughs> uh, it'll probably get me kicked out of the new America. Actually. Can always stay with us. <laughs> Thanks. The only thing that made me feel patriotic was a stripper. He didn't look that good, but he had an all-American smile that filled his underwear with all the lonely dollars from all the lonely men who no one ever suffers. Who wait around this bar, spending all their lonely hours, but no one's afraid. No one's running for cover The farther you run away The more you have to hide in the dark White as the worm that crawls In the Patriot's heart It was so red, white and blue The way he worked the bar Selling his embraces like Mr. President From his star no one here cares, babe, if you're worldly or wise They're just looking for men with sin in their eyes And he always says the same thing, he says Well, how you doing, baby? I'm your rod and your staff And for a tip, you can touch me And after a few tequilas, well, he becomes something holy and this crappy little bar with its sweating mirrors and its mildewed ceiling is more full of love yeah, than even natural selection and dollar for dollar babe it's a better bargain the more you pay the more it can break you all apart dollars pour like ashes from the patriot's heart God bless the Patriot's heart Now he knows your good time will kill him But the thought of getting old, well it does not thrill him He says give me all your money and don't tell me what you're thinking I'm the past you wasted, I'm the future you're obliterating Come on, Grandpa, remind me what we're celebrating That your heart finally dried up Or that it finally stopped working Or how you make a dead man come You grease up Cupid's tiny dart And see it shine like the alcohol That preserves the Patriot's heart God bless the Patriot's heart See him fade with the dawn and a pile of George Washington's His head is in a spin, he's happy to pass out again He would rather fade into the static than hear the violins that whine like old lovers who whine like they love him He would rather laugh alone in the dark with the soft hands of heaven Because they'd leave him alone He's finally a rich man in a mansion He does it for the money But he gives more than he's given And it's only when he's naked that he feels his heart in the whorehouse desert of the Patriot's heart God 
God bless the Patriots heart God bless the Patriots heart God bless the Patriots heart <laughs> no, that was, that was breathtaking. It really was. Well, that and the forty cigarettes I'm smoking at the moment. <laughs> but now that see that with that song was it? Do you want to sit back there yeah, for yes, a little bit? Yeah? Yeah. But with that song, was it um, where you went to a strip club and you got the idea, or was it just at home with the imagination? Both. Because I can, I see, I can so see, like you know, with you, like I can just see, like out of a night and just going right now. There's an idea coming to me, and then. No, it, it was Columbus, Ohio, Christmas about two years ago, and we were at a, a gay strip club, and uh, it was it was kind of amazing because it's a, you know Columbus is a really small town, yeah. so you've got like you've got you know the lesbians over there on that table, and you've got grandma from Kentucky on that table, you know, with with her toothless smile, and she's uh -huh. staring, and she's ah, I love that they're so good looking, aren't they? Damn it. And then you have like the old guys with the rugs and the sweaters, yeah, you know, and they're all sitting around, and it was great. And it was more like church than I've been. I've been. I used to go to church. It's more like church than I've been to in years. And it might have been the tequila that made it feel that way, but at the same time. So it wasn't one of those planned things. It was like you had a few beers and went, someone said, hey, there's a gay strip club. Should we check it no, out? No, we took a tour of all the gay stri strip clubs in town. How many was there? There's like 10. Fun. There's like 10. And they're as seedy as you could possibly. It's like, it's like David Lynch couldn't have conceived this. No, and, so, and so when you were there, like, was it you just enjoyed the night or... Like, did the song start coming to you straight away, or was it like the next day you said? It was you know, weeks later, and I just did, I wanted to write the song about it, and I just didn't want to be didn't want to write it from the point of view of a tourist. I, I didn't want to insult them, and so that's why it took me so long. It's a fantastic song, though. You must oh. be really proud of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh well, no, I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna get you into self hatred. Just love yourself a little bit. We do. So, because um, that's the other thing is, a friend uh, who knew you were coming on today texted me last night and said she uh, she was uh, Bridget Storm, you know the band they played with you in New York, right? And she wanted to say hello to you, but you, hello. you intimidate people. You know, they, they uh, why think, I'm not? That's, that's I'm what I so mean. I'm so like open and and I know that you know, but you have to take a punt with you because like you do look like you might you know punch the lights out. Yeah, I feel. <laughs> I think about that. Like often. you're gentle. I am. I. I know. Honestly, I, I. No. I mean, please. And the other thing I thought was amazing on Monday night was because um, people came up to me who knew I was a fan of yours, and they wanted to talk about Bill Hicks. And I think that's a, an ultimate compliment to you. It is a compliment. Yeah. You know that they they kind of put you and him in the same bracket. That's weird. Thank God you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, no, because like, that's the thing, like, you know, it's... <laughs> it's a weird point of your life when people just walk up to you and say, thank God you're alive, isn't it? It's sort of like, it's, it says it all, kind of. <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> are you healthy at the moment? Are you, are you keeping well, though, or are you kind of... Oh, yeah. Are oh, the yeah. nights blurred? Last night was very... It was blurred last night. That was a good night, though. Did you so, see a band or what? No, 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 just just, just, um, just exploring the wonderful world of Jameson, you know. And do you think uh, there might be a song in a couple of weeks? Oh, actually, yes. Um, the Night Bus. There was a huge fight in the Night Bus last night. Huge knockdown. Upstairs or down? Downstairs. I was upstairs. Right. It was amazing. So, and do you know what calls the Yeah, calls yeah. Or? Yeah, downstairs. You call me a queer. I'm not a queer. I told you I'm not a queer. You call me a queer, and it went on and on, and then I was like, "Well, I'm really sorry, actually. I didn't mean to. You know, I wasn't really implying that you were. You call me a queer. I'm not a queer." And it went on for two hours. Well, there was an hour ride, and then and at the end, yeah, they had a huge, huge, huge fight, and then they, they, then they were, went, you know, then they were outside on the pavement, you know, with red rimmed mouths and red rimmed no nostrils and scratches all over their faces, and and it was an, it was two white guys, and one of those was this big old white guy with a bald spot, and. Uh, some young guy, and as we were standing there, the, the the old guy took a big pop at the young guy who went down. And the fo look on his face was amazing. It was just resignation. Well, see, it was I, just it was beautiful. It was just okay. Well, some of those moments can be beautiful, but I just I'm so looking forward to it. in two years time when you're playing on and going. Here's a new one called the Night Bus. <laughs> it's just not the N29. Um, yeah. Do you want to uh, do another song now? Sure. Yeah, Which yeah, one yeah. are you going to do? It's called Ladies and Gentlemen. It's time. Yeah, could you play this on Monday as well? Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time For all the good that's in you to shine Say 
it's time For the maracas and the tambourines To play them until they break or until day breaks Don't hide anymore It's time Butte there from Mark Eitzel. <laughs> um, we're going to have... Uh, actually, we'll play uh, a track from... I'm Sean Hughes, by the way. Uh, Name-checking myself there, like a hip-hop artist. Uh, we're going to play uh, Take Courage from uh, the Greek album, as we'll call it for the time being. And <laughs> you can have a little breather. Six music. Six music. This isn't just music. <laughs> this is Six Music. Six Music. Six Music. Six music. Six. Music. 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 This isn't just music. This is Six Music. From the BBC. Off your fingers as if they were tears and find a new kind of beauty to put a silver lining on your golden years. All your clever talk and your glamour, bright lies you don't hear anymore. Yeah, you got so far out. All you want is a tide that takes you back to the shore Take courage, take courage Set the sun You used to wait for it Every morning Now you're looking so dumb And they don't see you standing there Left you hanging in mid-air And you lost your words But ooh, your heart was true You said the dirt can have 
have my pretty things But to the earth my heart does not belong If we can walk without our crutches Would we have anything to offer them? If we could walk without our crutches Would they have anything to see? We'll take the rings off your fingers As if they were tears Cause all the diamonds are hollow And ring painfully in our ears And if you want someone to help you Don't get carried away Last thing you need right now is a lesson in humility Well take courage, take courage Set the sign You used to wait for it Every morning Every morning But now you see that it was just another warning. From the album The Ugly American, Mark Eitzel there with uh, Take Courage. So now this was done uh, last summer in Greece, was it? Last, last winter in Greece, yeah. They made you go over in the winter? Yeah, in Athens. Right. For a month, yeah. For a, so, and what, were you just staying in a flat and stuff? Or were oh, you they, put, they put me in a hotel, you know. And so, like, I'm just intrigued. So you'd never met the musicians before? No. And did you tell them, like, did, did, were they in advance warning given the songs that you were going to do? Yeah. So that, that must be, so the first day, that must have been very odd. Well, the, the only weird thing was that, you know, you, you sit there and I don't, I don't speak Greek, so... What? <laughs> I don't. You surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I speak thirty languages, but not Greek. Um, no, I'm, I'm, uh, and and and, and, and I, you know, and you, you're talking. And I said, well, I think that I, I'm going like, I think it's that chord, and yeah. they go like, and they, and so you, you know, and then they start screaming at each other right. for like half an hour, and you're like, no, and you're like, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, it's like I just meant that chord, you know. And was there a moment like I'm sure on the first day there was a part where you just backing out of the room and, and imagine yourself getting on a plane back home? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> And so, um, so the experience in in the end, like you know, was a like. I'm, how many musicians were you? They were. Are they a band? As, as they, they are a band. It's this man named Manolis Famalos, and he's a he's a rock star in Greece. Right. He's a Greek rock star. And did he have a Greek rock star's ego? Not at all. No, he's great. No, that is a bit odd, really. Yeah, I know. And so, what? Is he normally a singer as well? Is it? Yeah, he does. He has a band. He's a he's a big following. He is a rock band. Right. More or less. You know. But with kind of the Greek. He, speak, he, si- he sings in Greek, and he has a few. No, actually, they're more they're more traditional, like uh, rock. Rock. Right. Yeah. And th- did you hear any of their stuff? I went t- three nights in a row. Yeah. What? Because you loved it so much. Um. Yeah, and I lo- I love them. They're great musicians and they're great people, and and the drinks are free. So. Yeah, I think I get the point now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, no, I look forward to that coming out as well. Like, is it is it something you might work with them again, or is that a total? One-off? I'd love to work with them again. Actually, they I mean, they were great people. I mean, truly. No, it's a really good idea, and I know Theodore, and it's, it's great that he's pulled it off as it's well. It's amazing he pulled it off. I, you know, no, yeah, he's he's a genius. Well done, Theodore. <laughs> so now you go back to America tomorrow, and what's the plans then? Oh God, no oh, plans. Just not turn on the news. Right. That's the first plan. Not uh, not turn on the radio. Not turn on the news. Try to immigrate. You know, because actually, you were talking about uh, moving over to Europe last time. Yeah. But you're still in San Fran. No, actually, no, I live out of my car. Um, I moved out of my house in San Francisco, and I drove to my sister's house. I'm a a middle-aged man transitioning into his sister's house. It's a traditional thing, yeah. So where does she live? Yeah, Columbus, Ohio. Right, hence all the Hence, that's where my car is parked. And And so is that where you'll head back to tomorrow, then? Yeah, and then after that, uh, Chicago for a couple shows, and then I'm going to New York for a month to do. I'm doing residency in New York, and then whereabouts? At the Knitting Factory. Beauty. Every Thursday night, and uh, then on uh, in February, I'm going to Brazil. I'm doing. Uh, John McIntyre from Tortoise is curating right. a tour of South America, and I'm, it's me and Kurt Wagner and a couple other people. 
That'd so, be amazing. Yeah, it'd be um, great. I've never been. So, so what, just Brazil, is it? Or all over South America? All over South America. Will you be checking out Peru? I hope so. I want to go. I mean, it's. I'm excited. I'm trying yeah. to. I'm trying to extend the ticket so that so that they'll let me stay there longer. And what is there problems yeah. with work permit or? I don't know. I've never been. I mean, I can't wait. No, it'd be well certainly fascinating. Like, I, but I wonder is there kind of a, an underground crowd there in Brazil? Because apparently there is. So apparently like when, that's huge. When the carnival is there, there's just a bunch of people in the bar going, "When's Eitzel coming?" Out? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And so, have you got rid of the place in San Fran then? Or, or do you still have? I'm out. I'm. I don't want to live there anymore. So, but like you sold the place? No, I'm renting it out. That's oh, that's the yeah. income. That's the income I'm getting. Yeah, but yeah. also there's the stability of you do have the home there when you want to go back. Well, I don't know. You try kicking somebody. It's right. You can't kick a tenant out in San Francisco. You can't. That's another song, definitely. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Can't yeah, the evil, yeah, the evil, yeah, the evil, the the evil landlord. I'll be no, I don't even know if she's paid rent the last couple of months. I haven't even checked. I mean, that's that's the kind of landlord I am. I'm terrible. But so, like, you know? obviously, like you got you got the plans up till Brazil, and then you'll just see where where the music takes you, really. Yeah, I mean, if I if if I come back and if if I do this album with Howie B, then I'll come back here in March and try to work with him then. So there's a plan to do a whole album because you've been working with Howie B during the week, right? On on very dance oriented. On his, we've been collaborating. Yeah. Yeah. He so, just he just he just sits there, and, you know, jams on the on the eight oh eight and. Which is what's an eight oh eight? It's a drum machine. Right. And as in state eight oh eight, there was a band. Oh like, yes, how interesting you would find that connection, Sean. I know. Yeah, it's like very that. yes. And so and what? So he he's going. <laughs> Bingy bing, bingy bing, and you're going. Yeah, I like that. And this, I have lyrics. I, right. you know, I've been, I, you know, I had, I've been working on this song about Jerry Lewis for months. It's called. It's the song is called. It's a shame about Jerry. Right. Um. And 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 and, and, and his music sent. It's just, it was, so it made it all happen. I don't know. He's he's great. He's got great energy and. Um. What it, what is it like besides obviously being about Jerry Lewis? What is it about Jerry Lewis? Jerry Lewis that you wrote. Um. <laughs> I'm intrigued because like I know, I know. Um, he's a, well, you know, because I love Jerry Lewis. Let me let me start with that. But there was that. There's just two things. Number one, um, th number three things. There's there's a scene in a film in which he's writhing around in the ground, uh, trying to woo uh, a, 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 a starlet for Dean, right. which is a weird scene. Yeah. It's a weird thing for anyone to do. It's soul destroying. And I and I I kind of thought about that for months. <laughs> And then there was um, another scene, another thing where, um, uh, well, he do, he runs this thing called the the, the, the telethon yeah, for for yeah. uh, a, uh, what is it, muscular dystrophy. And in the seventies, uh, and, and on the telethon, he would wheel these people in the wheelchair would come out looking sickly and pale, and he'd say, "Look at these sad freaks. They're never going to have a life. <laughs> Give us your money so these people can at least be able to buy a new wheelchair." <laughs> Right. You know, and uh, in the seventies, you know, when everybody else was was having a movement for their 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 sense of personal power, these people said, "Well, wait a minute, we actually do have lives. We're not just these sick little people in yeah. wheelchairs. We're actually human beings." Jerry, and they started picketing the telethon, and so um, a few months after the telethon, Life magazine did a huge spread, like a big like you know pictures of him on the yacht pictures of him like being fabulous you know the whole yeah. thing and they interviewed him and they said so what do you think about these people picketing the telethon and can you say the f word on on music six no yeah he said screw them right screw them i bought their goddamn wheelchairs right yeah. but he didn't say screw them and he Should, didn't I, say yeah, goddamn no, yeah and i and i just thought it's the most bitter thing i've ever heard in my life and i i, I don't know so you don't like them no, I actually do. He's a genius, you know. But in, the, in the same, this. this I mean, he's. A, I mean, it's funny, but it's like you can't. You can't support that. You can't support the fact that he's. He's this. He's this prick. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know. There, it's. It's just. It's reminding me a little bit of Johnny Mathis' fate, though. That, right. Well, you know, there's, in there's, that way, that there's. You love him, but you're kind of going. You know, this is my. Oh, maybe it, maybe it's true. Maybe I do well. I mean, but but just the level of of, of the king fallen, you know, like yeah. like the king interviewed in, in private, and this is what he's really like. Right, and it's 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 kind of great. But and, you, I, and I guess the American celebrity is is the king, you know, somebody like Jerry Lewis. Because so. yeah, but because like, I've spoken to you before, like, and you do get disillusion with even like people like the big rock stars who started off, you know, with right. the right intention, but celebrity destroys them all. Really. It does, celebrity. It, it really does. It's a hard thing. So now you're going to do another song for us. So which one are you going to do? Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's a real cheerful one. 
Well, I, I called, expect no more. It's called No One Wants Your Apologies. Okay. And is it... Well, it'll be evident what it's about, won't it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think that there's... I don't even know what the song means. So, um... Mark, it's a live view here with a song that we're all going to try and figure out, Joey. If I can figure out the chords... might want to live their lives like extras in the night of the living dead they might want to drill little holes deep in their head now i'm not one to judge but i know that nothing's free and no one wants your apology To the drunken, disappointed soldier All that justice missed Take him up to the leader's room The ghost of a drunken kiss Some eyes swarm like sharks And some shake like knees But no one wants your apology time If that's your very best At least leave me with a smile At least leave Just let it Shorter than the average bear, that yeah, one. Yeah, that's really short. Well, probably a good thing, actually. No, that was, uh, no, again, yeah, I wasn't, because, again, see, this what I mean, like, you know, when you play them live, they, I don't know, it just, it just really gets me, I think, because, uh, are you aware how good your voice is? Yes, very aware. No, but it really is, like, you know, you just have, it's just, you know, like, when you start singing first, like, I think your voice is getting better as, as time goes on as well. Yeah. But it's just that you do sing from your heart, which so few people do. Do they? I don't know. Everyone does. I don't. I don't think. You'd like to think so, but I. I really don't believe. Some people do. don't have a heart. Hey, I think you've, that's, you, that's you've sussed it. So now, um, it's been a real pleasure, as ever. All right, thank in. you. But um, so at the mo and like so, I'm a bit worried about this living out of the car, though. <laughs> are you? Are you ever going to settle? I don't know, man. Brazil. I have that's no where you I, end up I don't have any idea where I'll end up. I don't. I don't know. I mean, there's no point worrying about it. It's better to keep... I think I'm a shark and I have to keep moving, you know, to, to breathe. So that's what I'm going to do.